Okay, so Next League and I have been experimenting a lot with the uh, blue black uh, Luris Prowess, or sorry, Luris, Luris uh, Merfolk, and uh, not Luris Prowess. Uh, uh, that was the first home for uh, for Luris way back when this was spoiled. It's, that seemed like at the time like the most uh, natural, obvious home, but as it turns out, um, at least uh, at least given the new companion restrictions. <clears throat> I think um, Luris actually is better in Merfolk, as we saw in the last um, in the last video uh, I recorded on this. So let's run it back again. Now, uh, full disclaimer: for some reason, uh, I have got a quite the string of three twos. I never seem to really do worse than three two, which I guess is good. I think there may have been a four one buried somewhere in there, or you know, realistically, probably one of the earlier ones. But here's the thing: um, I really think I can 5-0 again with this, and I think I can 5-0 with it multiple times in a row, because every time I lose, it really feels like those games were winnable, which of course, you know, sounds like a cope. Maybe to some extent it is. But, like, it is important to keep in mind when you lose because it's your play, and when you lose because it's your deck, and the fundamentals of this deck actually do seem very strong. And I actually think I'm finally... I might finally be close to settling on the specific main and sideboard configuration I like. Uh, I have really been liking this. I think the last version that I posted, uh, or that I, or the, yeah, the last, I think, version I posted on Twitter, it had, it was basically this same main deck, but it had Bind the Monster instead of Dismember in this slot. Um, and it had uh, those uh, Pathways instead of uh, Watery Grave. So uh, why did I make these changes? Well, first of all, uh, after tinkering a while, I, I do think Dismember is just a little more versatile. I mean, it's instant speed, so one thing that I didn't like was that Bind the Monster was kind of soft to uh, Heliod combo, because, you know, if they drop Heliod first and then they drop um, uh, Spike Feeder, there's really not a lot you can do with just Bind the Monster. I mean, heck, actually, you can't really do much with Bind the Monster even if they drop uh, Spike Feeder first, because it can still do its thing even uh, even while it's completely tapped down. Um, whereas, uh, yeah, Dismember... Uh, basically deals just about everything. I do like also that it's slightly easier to cast. Uh, it, you can cast it off Immutable. You can't do that with Bind the Monster. Uh, and I also like the way it's scalable. Unlike Bind the Monster, you can actually uh, pay uh, black mana into it, and especially this version, which now has 12 black sources. Um, yeah, you will actually be able to at least pay one, and you know, not, not completely infrequently, you, you even pay the full three. I, I actually find that one and two are by far the most common. I actually think I pay one and two the most... Uh, Almost equally, actually. I'm very surprised. Um, but, you know, having the option to pay three, it did come up a few times, uh, particularly when I'm at two life, and it would otherwise be completely dead, which is very nice. Um, but but it is, you know, nice that Dismember is also fully functional under Blood Moon, <clears throat> and it's fully uh, it's fully functional even if we happen to have the odd, um, you know, hand that doesn't have any black sources, like just Mutavolts and Islands, or just Islands, or, heaven forbid, just Mutavolts, which does happen sometimes. Um... So yeah, that's why I think Dismember, it's not pitchable to uh, Force of Negation, that's uh, the downside, but I think since it's just generally the best, it's been so good for us, even when we had no black sources, and it's really just better with black sources, I, I do think, in the main, this is a slightly safer bet, um, so I do, I do like Dismember, and I think I'm going to continue with it uh, for the foreseeable future, and um, so that brings us to the next issue, is why are we on Watery Grave? Um, we're essentially a mono blue deck, at least in the main deck, because um, the only black card we really play, the only two black cards we really play are, well, five black cards, I guess, are four Dismembers and one Luris in the uh, Companion Zone. Um, you know, both of which actually don't technically even require any black lands. We can uh, cast Dismember just using life, and we can uh, violin Luris, so we technically actually don't need any black sources to play either of these. However, um, I actually really do like the Black Splash, uh, particularly because it is pretty free, because it does kind of power up the Dismembers, and because actually it does basically allow you to upgrade Fairy Conclave into Creeping Tar Pit. Now, I, I think if Luris wasn't in the mix, I don't think it'd be worth it to take extra damage and sometimes have your Dark Slick Shores come into play tapped um, in order to justify upgrading uh, Fairy Conclave to Creeping Tar Pit. I, I, I really don't. I don't think this was just something overlooked for me. Uh, or, or even for that matter, to uh, power, you know, to be able to uh, um, avoid losing life with Dismember. However, since we are playing Luris, and since it does come up not infrequently that sometimes we do want to cast it, sometimes we want to cast it early, particularly if we mole really low, 
Um, yeah, actually having the black, uh, the, you know, a black splash is pretty free. And um, why is it that I replace Watery Grave, uh, why I replace the Pathways with Watery Grave? And I'll explain why very simply. The Pathways always come in as blue. I mean, okay, once in a blue moon, I've played them as a, uh, you know, as a black source. I almost always, like 95% of the time, I regret it when I do do that. Um, because most of the time I either draw another, like, Dark Click Shores or Creeping Tar Pit, making you know, just making my mana more awkward, because I almost always ended, I almost always ended up with two black sources, just with eight, um, almost, and that's, and that, and that's what we're going to get to in a moment, but almost, uh, I almost always had two black sources, I almost always had one, but, um, the fact that I had to choose either or, it just meant that, uh, it was coming into play, ta it was coming into play as an island almost every single time, or I should say, not an island, but a blue source, and, um, yeah, and the few times when it did come in as a black source, I, I, I think I probably regretted it like 75% of the time. Only 25% of the time, I'm like, yeah, I made that was the right call, um, <laughs> which is not which is not good. Um, it, at that point, I basically just swapped. I mean, it, it is decent because I mean it's it's almost better than Island in every way, and I, and I say almost because of the big elephant in the room, uh, cough, blood moon, cough. Um, so I basically just swapped them out for islands. That was one of the first things. I went back to the original uh, mana base, and I did like that I was more resilient to Blood Moon. Not gonna lie, that was a, that was a good plus. Um, it is annoying to uh, to randomly get hosed by uh, Rakdos, um, uh, Rakdos mid rains or even Obosh Prowess, our own uh, <laughs> our own like uh, uh, beloved deck, um, turned against us in one of the um, one of the matches, and uh, Blood Moon just completely annihilated us. Um, so yeah, it is. So eight islands was kind of nice uh, to be a little more resilient to Blood Moon. And in all honesty, if I do actually tweak the deck more, I may uh, that may actually be where I ended up where I end up going back to, to as the uh, the eight islands. That being said, I do actually find Watery Grave is actually still pretty free. Um, it's not as free as the uh, as the uh, Pathways, but it's almost as free um, because. Actually, there is so many spots where you actually can play this tapped, and it is actually kind of nice that it it can come into play tapped and basically have no downside if you've got nothing better to do. But also, it has a pretty light upside of only costing two life if you do want to put it into play. So it's it's actually surprisingly free, even with no fetch lands or anything. Just having this be a duel, it's um it's pretty good. I mean, you know, the, these shocks are uh, the, these were quite the rage when they came out for a reason because they're they're very flexible. You know, um, the best of both worlds. They're like they're better most of the time than the pain lands because you only take a set two and then you're good for the rest of the game. But they're like the old tap lands from, you know, when I first started playing too, if you need them to be. So they're kind of either or, and they're arguably better at either or, especially since they also count as islands, which actually can be the blood sword. Um, but the main reason why I'm on Watery Grave instead of instead of four more islands is very simple. I want access to more black sideboard cards, and I'll explain why. Um, so first of all, go for the throat. So... I think if anybody has been following uh, my list on Twitter or some of my discussion, some, some of the things I've been saying, uh, responding to comments, I, I think you can see why I kind of went for Go for the Throat because I was experimenting with uh, Bind the Monster, of course, at first. First that was in the main, then it got swapped with Dismember. Then I started experimenting with other um, creature removal options instead of Bind the Monster because, you know, Bind the Monster is good, but for example, I played against Spirit and once they had like a, a fan... Uh, a Supreme Phantom, a Drog Skull Captain, and like a Mausoleum Wanderer. And I guess, you know, it was kind of nice that I, I was able to bind the Mausoleum Wanderer, but of course it still was able to counter my stuff. Um, you know, but like, so that just got me thinking, you know, there's got to be a better option. I actually did uh, look online a bit for like good uh, blue removal. And, you know, the one article I actually had uh, Frogify listed, and I'm like, oh yeah, I miss, must have missed this one. So I did try Frogify for a while. It was actually surprisingly good. That's a two mana blue enchantment that makes a that basically enchants a creature and the enchanted creature becomes a uh, one one frog permanently actually that was surprisingly good um but you know i do think i did think i could still do better because frog of five of course it was sorcery speed so it was a little clunky and also they still had a one one which actually was very good in basically every situation unless i either was facing like a burn very aggressive deck like prowess where sometimes those one th that one one would still end up chipping away at my life total quite a bit um, or it would block Silvergill Adapt, uh, which was annoying. So, you know, it wasn't perfect, uh, but I actually do think Frogify probably is actually the best uh, blue removal spell, most flexible, um, but it's still just kind of lacking a little bit, 
yeah, I don't know what else to say. I might go back to it, but it is uh, still not uh, still not perfect. Although it way exceeded my expectations uh, for sure. Um, but yeah, I think it's pretty easy to see that Go for the Throat is you know mostly an upgrade to Frogify in almost every way. Uh, it uh, is an instant. It deals with the creature outright, so they don't stick around with a one one. Also, for creatures that they give you something when they die, they give you a card back like Spell Queller or something like that. You know, um, Go for the Throat um, does give you that back with Frogify. Actually, worse, not only does it not give you the card back, but if the frog dies, you don't even get the card back um, because it lost all abilities. So, you know, uh, go for the throat. I mean, you know, it's like, hey, as long as I'm splashing black, I thought, well, might as well just play a card that's basically strictly superior, almost strictly superior to Frogify. Of course, it doesn't deal with a um, Platinum Imperion, so I will say that. Uh, but, um, yeah, and the reason why I'm going with uh, Destroy Target uh, non artifact creature instead of Doomblade, Destroy Target non black creature, um, and I'll get. To why it's over, I'm playing it over, um, over uh, Fatal Push in a second, but uh, it's. I think this is pretty obviously better than Doomblade as long as uh, Death Shadow decks are a big part of the format, which they still are. Um, if Death Shadow ever gets marginalized, then there might be some um, there might be some consideration to playing um, Doomblade instead. But honestly, Luris, I, I think Luris is always going to be um, present in the metagame in some number, you know, in, in some number of decks going forward, because it's just such a powerful effect, and there's a lot of decks that don't, aren't really interested in playing any permanents that are more than two mana anyway, like, we're a good example, that's why we're all in on Luris, um, because, you know, I mean, I, I, I've, I've been playing Merfolk without any, uh, permanents that cost it over two mana before, before it was cool with Luris, so, like, so for me, I'm way in my comfort zone, and Luris is, is about as free as, a as a companion can get for how I like to build uh, most of my decks. Um, the only the only thing holding me back from playing Luris on, on almost every type of deck I build is really just uh, the mana base because I I generally like to stick to uh, you know cheaper um, cheaper permanents and spells too frankly if I can uh, wherever possible. Um, you know of course Murfolk's a little clunky because we got a lot of two drops but still I mean still way on the cheaper side compared to way more mid, you know, may, way, decks that look way more mid-rangey. We can be very mid-rangey, though, surprisingly. I mean, cards like Merfolk Trickster and Silver Gill Adept and the Lords, uh, they might be cheap, but they have a deceptive power to them. Obviously, I'm not here to, to describe the strikes of Merfolk all over again, but, um, but yeah, um, I just, uh, I like Go for the Throat. Uh, it deals with Death Shadow, it deals with Luris. Um, it's probably going to be the best, uh, the best uh, two-mana black, um, destruction spell for a long time i think uh you know i did the also think about like cast down destruction non-legendary creature but then i quickly realized that like dealing with loris is one of the most important things you possibly can do in the matchups where loris is a companion and not being able to kill loris is kind of uh that alone just kind of like kills it in my opinion um cast down would be pretty amazing i think but but for the fact that you got to be able to kill loris you know um that's probably missing some other things i mean i've seen people play tassiger in a long time um but like, yeah, it's mostly Luris. Just, yes, yeah, that that's just rough, you know. Um. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So I, 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 I think it's. Oh yeah, and then just uh, briefly, uh, why am I playing this over Fatal Push? Well, very simple. I am not playing fetch lands uh, first of all. So, uh, Fatal Push is basically, uh, you know, just, it only deals with two converted mana cost cards, which you know, I mean, it still could be good. But uh, one of the reasons I like Go for the Throat in the first place is because it can deal with um creatures that possibly are out of the range of Dismember. Like, I've already killed a Primeval Titan and attacked for the win. So, you know, that was good. Uh, um, yeah, uh, I mean, of course, Death Shadow, Fatal Push already deals with, but... Um, so I'm going to tend to my cat in a second, but... Yeah, so anyway, just Fatal Push. Um, I, I don't really... I don't, I'm don't. i not super interested in running fetches, certainly not just to turn on Fatal Push. Uh, but also, um, I just also, like, go for the throat, how it can deal with, like, cards like, um, Storming Entity, how it can deal with, I mean, cards like Gurmag Angler, you don't see that too often, but when you do, it's really nice to go for the throat, just deals with that pretty easily. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know, I don't know too many of the big, big, uh, um, big creatures, I guess, nowadays. Uh, Obosh, I mean, <laughs> sometimes if we play Obosh Prowess, you know, that's a thing, but anyway, point is, is, uh, is uh yeah um i just like since i'm already not playing fetches I, I just like the added additional power oh yeah and also since i only have 12 sources um it's not necessarily super consistent to be able to play it on turn one anyway so uh you don't necessarily give up a lot for going from one to two uh in black when you have 12 blue black sources uh whereas you have 16 blue sources um and that of course takes us to the last change which is adding thought seize. i used to have uh 
I think it was Spell Snare was the last the last uh, variant that I had in this spot. Um, Spell Snare did do its job in stopping a number of Tibalt's trickeries from happening, but I quickly pretty I pretty quickly realized that Spell Snare is very surprisingly narrow. Uh, the very few a few times when I tried to replace Deprive with it, when I thought that they had a lot of two drops, I almost always regretted it. They usually bring in some other cards. I usually need to be able to deal with those other cards. Um, I almost always regretted not having Deprive instead, and there's very few matchups where, other than Tibalt's Trickery, where I, I want all 12 counter spells at the same time. Um, it's just going to be kind of clunky when you have to hold up that much mana all the time. You know, so I just thought, like, well... And, and actually, I did have a... I did have, um, what's it called? Uh, uh, Damping Sphere for a while. Um, because I kind of like mixing it up, having some spell-based solutions and having some... Um, having some permanent base solution so i thought yeah damping sphere. I, actually damping sphere i think did the job at least in one game i didn't play a ton of tybalt's decks uh when, when trying it but it did the job in one game where it base it, it basically makes their tybalt's trickery cost six if i'm not mistaken because so they caught they have to cost a cast violent outburst and then the tybalt's trickery will cost one more so that means they have to have four but then but then the uh, spell they cast at tybalt's trickery costs two um, so then that means, uh, yeah, six. They have to have six mana available instead of, uh, instead of three, which actually buys you a lot of times, and if you, a lot of time, and if you happen to have, draw the second one, that's basically locking them out, because that, that makes their combo cost, um, uh, let's see, uh, um, yeah, five, and then another, uh, another four on top of that, so nine, which is pretty, uh, pretty intense. To add an additional uh, an additional six mana on top of your uh, cascade spell, I guess it still is theoretically possible, but who knows? I mean, I even draw the third one, and at twelve mana, they're almost at hard casting Emerald Cold territory. So anyway, um, so yeah, I, I, I I'm not gonna lie, Thoughtseize is not quite as good against Tibalt's Trickery as either Thoughtseize. I mean, as either um, Spell Snare or uh, or Damping Sphere because um, you know because uh, they can they can still go off in response uh, with only twelve. Black sources, it, it, you know, I don't, I'm not always able to cast it on turn one, especially since um, eight of those twelve black sources, uh, only eight of those twelve black sources are actually able to make black on the first turn because creeping tar pit comes into play tapped. That being said, I still like mixing it up. Uh, it still has helped in a number of matchups. I don't think it's actually won me a game against Tibal's Trickery yet, but, but then again, I don't think I've really seen it that much. Uh, um, I did actually snag a uh, a uh, cascade spell once, although I think the opponent had just too many cascade spells and both overpowered my counters and actually uh and i took one so uh you know that can happen sometimes but anyway uh i'm gonna still be testing this for a while because i just like the flexibility of thoughts bearings it helps the titan matchups um you know a little extra layer of disruption there um it helps against i mean you know most combo actually uh, and actually most control because most control almost always uh control almost always holds up counter magic and thoughts he's uh just kind of the original counter spell buster so you know um, not perfect by any means, but um, it's a very solid card. I like it, and uh, and it's uh, way more versatile. Comes in way more matches and matchups than the other ones. So we're gonna run this back. Let's hope to get better than three two. Hopefully, this isn't the first league in a, a long, long time that we do worse than three two. But hopefully, we can uh, bring back the trophy. That would be nice. Let's give it a shot.